Like, he knows if certain things aren't working, he can take the game over himself. Um, I think Case Keenum had a pretty awesome, like, quote or something on the sideline to Josh. He's like, man, this is your game. You can take over whatever the hell you want, take the game into your hands. And I guess that kind of got some wheels turning in Josh's head, like, maybe I can just do it all myself, which he can. Yeah. And we've seen that, yeah. you know, every single game this year. But we keep telling him to slide, but the dude won't do it. I mean, he's taking off, running over – linebackers and jumping over the big boy yeah yeah so we we try to we give them little incentives here and there to slide during the week like we had one of our teammates had to show up to a walkthrough and just a jock strap if josh slid (laughs) and i think and i think that was like the only week he actually slid on a play Good afternoon, everybody. Uh, I'm joined by Bo Allen, and uh, we're going to have Dawson Knox on the pod in a little bit, star tight end for the Buffalo Bills. Fresh off, uh, well, it's been a couple days now, their big, big win over the Dolphins where he played big. Um, And uh, before that, we're going to talk about a couple football topics um, and finish the show after Dawson with some Christmas talk because, you know, it's even though it doesn't really feel like it, Hasn't been cold Speak enough. for yourself, man. I'm up here in Minnesota. I'm not down in Tampa anymore. I got some Christmas vibes. It's beginning to feel a lot like Christmas, Chris. I love it. Well, good for you, Bo. Frank. Also, it's great to see you, man. I feel like I haven't seen you in a while. How you doing? I'm good. I haven't, right? I haven't seen you since the city of Philadelphia just wrecked my body and gave me the <laughs> flu and a respiratory infection. I, I, I love that. I might quit drinking, honestly. Yeah, well, you say that a lot. You know, I'm just happy you're pinning that on the city of Philadelphia and not on, you know, yours truly, Bo Allen. But, you know, it's it's a delight to see you today, Chris. You seem especially chipper, and I, I truly love that. Oh, thanks, man. Thanks. Uh, f- feelings always mutual, usually, um, sometimes. Uh, Bo. It's always mutual sometimes. <laughs> nice. I love that. Well, I thought maybe we'd get right into it and talk about that thrilling Monday night football game. Maybe devote like 40 to 50 minutes really breaking it down, analyzing it, because that was just a great fucking game. And we've had the pleasure of really talking about some real great Monday night football games on this podcast, haven't we, Chris? Can I admit something? Talk, man. So last night, I kind of like had the game on, and I was like, oh, I'll keep an eye on this thing. And then like so- at some point during the third quarter – uh, I was sitting there with my wife, and uh, I just turned the TV off and said, fuck this game. And uh, I don't know really a lot about what happened. And, you know, well, I know well, I work for, you know, I work for myself, basically. But, you know, I work in the NFL media kind of sector, and people are like, yeah, it's your responsibility to watch all the games. Fuck that shit, man. I, I've watched a lot of games this weekend, and that, that one was just not – I knew what was going to happen. We gave out, actually, on, our, on the win bet you know, thing now, win – so you know, so you listen to the pod. The win, you know, like part of it is I'm going to give out a little parlay for these primetime games. I don't necessarily bet these big. So you want to take them to the bank, take them to the bank. But I gave out a parlay last night. It was uh, it was uh, Packers minus six and a half. It was the under, hit, hit. It was Aaron Jones over 40-something yards rushing, hit. And then it was Christian Watson touchdown. So, uh, you know, the, the guy that evidently got thrown under the bus a little bit after the game was the one yeah. who, uh, who didn't catch a touchdown. It was because of that very, very instance that, that, that Aaron Rodgers was talking about. Um, that's all I know. That's all I know yep. about the game, other than it was cold, and our boy Scotty Trill messaged me and said he was up there. He said parking uh, people in Green Bay make $2,000 a night parking, uh, allowing parking at their residencies. Am I saying yeah, that correctly? Two. Residencies. Residences. Or, you just say res. Yeah, I would try to sound British or something. <laughs> the residencies in Green yeah. Bay. Yeah, two thousand dollars in Green Bay is like fifty grand somewhere else. What is a residency? Uh, that's a that's a, like ha- a that's a house. It's like a medical that's a, residence. Oh, that's residency. A doctor. Yeah. Doctor at a hospital. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Residency. Um, well, you yeah. summed up that game pretty well, Chris. I watched the whole thing. I think the highlight for the um, Los Angeles Rams was a gay fifty-five yard field goal. Um, nice. Yeah. So Matt Gay hit a 55 yard field goal, which was only the third 50 plus field goal hit in 25, um, you know, degree temperatures or you lower. Know, you know. Um, yep. I, 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 exciting uh, stuff. I would be afraid to kick a ball in the in in weather like that, man. That would hurt the fuck out of your foot. And those little soccer Break cleats. Your foot. Yeah. <laughs> 
Exactly. Um, yeah. So, right. Yeah, it was a pretty, pretty thrilling game. Also, I Do you ever think Matt Gay well, is sitting there watching the World Cup like, fuck, what am I doing? Yeah. <laughs> All the things I could do with my foot. I could be a foot model on OnlyFans, just <laughs> ma make probably more money. <laughs> Um, I could be, I could play, I could, could have played soccer and been like one of these superstars, but instead well, actually, I'm just Chris, kicking a fucking ball in 10 yeah. degree weather and everybody hates me, me if, if I miss it and nobody cares if I make it. Well, I cared. Um, evidently, but, uh, actually Chris, just so you're aware in the future, most feet models don't go on OnlyFans; they go on feedfinder.com. So write that down for, <laughs> for the future. Bo, do you have I'm a hearing. thing? That's what people are telling me. Do you have a thing? No, nah, but if it comes up in conversation with Rex Ryan, you know. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay. Um, <laughs> that's pretty good. That's pretty Another good. Another fun uh, thing I saw from the Monday Night Football game, I noticed that there was a big cash app ad spot with uh, Josh Allen and George Kittle. Kind of wondering what we need to do here at the Greenlight Pod now that we're sponsored by Cash App. What do we got to do to get a fucking uh, sick little ad spot, Chris? Let's start. Oh, I was thinking just what do we got to do to that. book Josh Allen on the show? <laughs> Oh, so yeah. So that's what we'll, we'll ask uh, Dawson Knox. Yeah, we'll go through Dawson, and we'll also talk to our boys over at Cash App and see if we can we can get Josh Allen on the show. No question. No question. Um, okay, so we got some football to talk about. Which which yeah. topic you want to start with, Cowboy Reed? Well, I think Jalen Hurts is the uh, is the biggest one, right? And, that is a big uh, topic. Shoulder injury, and he might miss the Dallas game this weekend. Uh, is it smart for the Eagles just to send him the rest of the way? Uh, they don't have the East wrapped up. This game Saturday is kind of the decision, you know, the the one that can turn the tide a yeah. good bit. But uh, would it be worth it just to keep him healthy through the rest of the regular season and just see where the chips fall for the last three games? So I want to avoid but, rust if, you know, right, yeah. right, Bo? That's yep. part of it because yep. they probably have the bye. I mean, especially if they get a win. If they win one game, they get the bye, right? And there's yeah. no guarantee they win one game, especially if he's not playing. So I think probably the best case scenario, and I wonder what the Giants are going to be playing for week 18, uh, would be to rest him the next two weeks. Only they know where his shoulder really is. Um, yeah. But then week 18, you could like ruin some shit for the Giants. Uh, or maybe not ruin some shit for the Giants because, quite honestly, like maybe you want them in over somebody else. Like It's the Giants or who? Commanders, probably. Oh, fuck. They can both come. You, you know, definitely like, don't want the Lions. Yeah, you don't want the Lions. The Lions are mm -hmm. uh, nobody wants the Lions in in, in They're the kind of spooky right now. Yeah, they're really spooky. They're like the no, I mean, they're like the ghosts in the darkness. You ever seen that movie? Hell yeah. Bunch of fucking people just getting lunched by lions. <laughs> Dan Campbell's uh, out there somewhere. I love that. It's fun to cheer for the Lions. But going back to your earlier point, Chris, like Eagles are playing so hot right now and they have such good energy and momentum. You kinda wanna yeah, they're so hot right now. Eagles. Uh, you kind of want to ride that wave, you know? And so if you sit Jalen Hurts, get him healthy, does that mess up the mojo? Here's the thing, though. You know who's got a lot of mojo, who's got a lot of momentum, who's got a lot of swag? Gardner Minshew. He does. You know? I kind of mm -hmm. want to see some Minshew mania here. Um, and I think he's, you know, pretty athletic quarterback, and he really doesn't, you know, for as you know, bold as some of his – plays are and his playmaking ability he doesn't really turn the ball over too much so i think um if the you know the eagles decide to go the route and kind of make sure jalen is healthy and squared away for postseason uh you know the offense is in pretty capable hands with uh garner Minshew. so I think how, that's a plus. How, how can anybody root against the guy who hugs his dad by assaulting him in an aviator jacket i mean yeah, like that that. That, that that hug was uh was one of the greatest hugs of all time and and you know, it just made me love him even more. He, he's, as you mentioned, forty-one and twelve uh, touchdown interception ratio his his entire career, I believe. So this cat is um, this cat is going to take care of the football. Um, and you know, going to Dallas, I kind of wonder if there's a couple guys that aren't healthy. If a couple guys need a rest, maybe it's the weekend to just do it. You know. Um, yeah. Dallas is not going to catch you by 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 winning this game. Um, you have an opportunity to maybe, uh, I don't know, if you played them a second time and, and Jalen Hurts is playing, you might throw the kitchen sink at him. You're gonna, you might see him a third time. Do do you, do you want to give him everything? Do you want to save something for the the third matchup? Uh, I think Sirianni's got some interesting decisions to make 
over yeah. the next two, three weeks. I think he's the coach of the year. He can go make that money uh, and, and solidify that, that title by just being not only a great coach and, and calling the right plays and putting his team in the right position to win, but also being a strategic coach here um, at the end of this season because there's different ways you can do this. Now, one thing people are going to parse is like Jalen carried the ball a lot on, uh, on Sunday against the Bears, uh, who are not a great defense. He carried the ball 17 times, including scrambles. Now, 11 of them were design runs. It's the second most of the season for him. Uh, and after the injury, he went 6-9 and nine for 102 in the fourth. So maybe the injury is not terrible, um, yeah. but it's something they got to be careful with. And, you know, like when it comes to running Jalen Hurts, it's a huge part of who he is. So I personally am not going to go down this road of like, uh, you know, we shouldn't run Jalen Hurts. I just think it's picking your spots. Um, yeah. In the playoffs, you burn the ships. Your shoulder could fall yeah. off. You're trying to win a Super Bowl. Um, but, yeah, I, I think that's the one thing he might want to have back is just a little less design runs against the Chicago Bears. Uh, but they got an opportunity to make this whole thing right. As long as Jalen, his shoulder's in a place that when he comes back, he's not rusty and he's not rushing back. Um, you know, and, and I think the best way to do that might be to get him action before the bye. You don't want to if – if he can play before the bye, you, you should play him before the bye. Because the first playoff game for the Eagles would be what date right now, as it stands, if if they played in the second round. When's the second round of the playoffs? Seven, 17th, I think. 17th of, like that. of January? That's a month away. Something you know? around that. So yeah. that's a long time, dude. I, I I don't like a guy sitting around and the first snap you take. Now, they would – I don't know who they'd play, uh, but it's a playoff game. And you, right. last year in the playoffs – you know, they got boat raced by the Bucks. It's a totally different team, but it's the playoffs. And so get this guy some reps, get him get him healthy first and foremost. But if you have an opportunity, you gotta get him some reps before the playoffs. Dallas Goddard yeah. is uh is off IR so he could face the Cowboys. Yeah. That's a that's a boost for um Gardner Minshew. Too. That's big. Um, yeah. I, I think I mean that begs the question is like you wanna try to get Jalen and Dallas kind of connected up to before the playoffs, the postseason run and, For and sure. things like that. So, I mean, I think if I'm Nick Sirianni, like everything's kind of going right. I think you kind of just stick to your guns a little bit. You don't mix anything up too much. I mean, Chris, you mentioned earlier, like you kind of – not bust out all your bag of tricks. And I think there's something to be said for that, but it's such a fine line to walk. You don't want to go out and drop one of the Cowboys. You never want to lose the Cowboys if you're the Eagles, kind of regardless of the situation. Uh, but you can, I think you can be very smart here with the way you approach it if you're, you know, the Eagles and, and Sirianni and everything like that. But I kind of envision them just going out and doing what they do and not doing what, you know, they've been doing, not necessarily needing to do anything super fancy. Um, hopefully just riding the defense, um, you know, Gardner well, Minshew comes Dallas out, protects did. the football. And, do what right. Dallas did. Dallas came to town and scared the shit out of you with Cooper Rush. You don't think you, you're you a better team. You don't think you can scare right. the shit out of Dallas and maybe beat them with Gardner Minshew? Exactly. So, you don't um, got to do anything super fancy. All the um, pressure's on Dallas. And that's just yeah. the way you want it. I mean, and, and a lot of that is because – Dallas had a chance to make this a lot more of a, a big deal by taking care of business last week, and they didn't. So, yeah. Um, interesting. Here, speaking of, uh, you know, backup quarterbacks and backup quarterbacks here in Philadelphia, Chris, I came across an interesting little tidbit when I was browsing the R NFL subreddit last night. After you got Late done looking night. at feet picks. <laughs> After I got no, done looking at feet picks. <laughs> anyway, um, <laughs> From poster Duck Freak 10, I caught this early, and it, the post has since been edited, which I was kind of happy to scoop that up. But the title is, Nick Foles will be the starting quarterback for the Colts for the remainder of the season, which I was pumped to hear. And then there was this uh, in the body, which has since been deleted, but I caught it early because, you know, I'm here on the inside scoop. The, uh, the poster said, I know, some, I know somebody who was an assistant quarterbacks coach for the Eagles during their Super Bowl run. I would love to figure out who that is, Chris. Ooh. Uh, he, we can find out here in a sec. He told me that Indianapolis is hiring him for the remainder of the season because they're switching to starting foals, and he asked him to join the staff. And then the poster edited it. said, I edited the details of who I know to make it a little more vague on who it is just in case it could end up hurting him or me in the long run. And then I went back and visited this morning um and the post was like basically completely edited but it was highly upvoted and 
thought that'd be a fun little thing to talk about because we all love Nick Foles and we all love Nick Foles this time of the year, you know, so. We absolutely love Nick Foles, but what's the point? I mean, the point is I'm, not hurting Matt Ryan and owing a bunch of money because you're out of it, right? The Colts are eliminated. We blew the game. They, they We're done. Yeah, we technically the... have one scenario, but it's like so ridiculous that it's not going to happen. They need the Texans. Nah, to win like Nick three Foles games. is back. Yeah. Come on. I'm just, I'm wondering what's going on there. And I, you know, I'd love to watch uh, Nick Foles go out there and do some heroic shit, but for what? You know? For what? Now, the one good thing is, like, if Nick Nick Foles goes out there and plays lights out, he can extend his career. You know, I'd hate to see his career finish uh, this way. I mean, he's seen some crazy shit this year. I mean, can you, everything that happened to Nick since since that run is just, it's wild. It's wild. You know, the the going down to Jacksonville signing a big deal, I can remember the first game he throws like a bomb, and you're like, wow, they're going to be good. Look at that. 50 yard touchdown and then he breaks his clavicle uh the same play and that just starts this downward spiral gave birth to the Gardner Minshew thing isn't that interesting he his his collarbone Mm -hmm. Jalen Hurts has a collarbone that's what happened to fucking wow uh, that's what happened to um that's what happened to Nick Foles Nick Foles collarbone gave birth to Gardner Minshew Jalen Hurts has a shoulder slash collarbone that's given uh, Gardner Minshew. I don't know what this means. I don't know. It but means something. It means something. I remember listening to Minshew last week talking about the influence Mike Leach had on him and how Leach always believed in him and was telling him just to wait for his opportunity. Here's his opportunity. He's an unrestricted free agent after this season. He can play himself into a, a serious contract. A big opportunity. A big opportunity for uh, for old old mustache man. Um, they had to Love go to get him off his jet come boat. Full circle. They had to go. They had to, they had to go like wake him up in a duck blind or yeah. like go tap on his RV in the parking lot. They were like, "Gardner, I, Gardner, Jalen's hurt." What? He comes out. There was a video from the Tampa Bay uh, Bucks locker room. Um, Gio Bernard had his uh, backpack on. He was ready to leave after the game um, on Sunday, and uh, he was kind of being hounded by the uh, by the media. Who was in the wrong? He was asked. A couple, he, he, it almost seemed like he took offense to one of the questions. Uh, what, what was the issue from both sides there? Let me hit this. Yeah, this one is a yeah. frustrating one to watch for me, man. I got it's such an uncomfortable video, and you know, I think we all understand what it's like when you're, you know, in the in the locker room after a game, especially an upsetting loss. Things aren't really going your way. Um, I just want to say this: Gio Bernard is like one of the best guys ever. A complete pro. He does everything the right way. He's been a little bit hurt. Uh, he was on IR for the Bucks earlier this year, but you could see he was kind of uncomfortable. Like he wanted to go talk to his family, you know, after the game, and it seemed like he was trying to leave the locker room. And and it's just frustrating because it's like, you know, there's Cameron in his, in his face. It feels like kind of a gotcha journalism type moment where they're almost looking for a reaction out of him more than anything, and he knows that. And I think one of the comments made by one of the media people down in Tampa was really frustrating. Like you haven't done anything all year or something along those lines. And there's just no need for any of that. It just, I think it's a lose, lose situation. I thought Gio handed it pretty professionally. You know, he just basically said like, Hey, that one's on me. That one's on number 25. Didn't really feel like he wanted to elaborate on that. Uh, But it's just so frustrating sometimes when, you know, Gio, there's a fake punt that he, you know, there's a big miscommunication on. He knew he was wrong. It's like such a nightmare scenario for a player. And then to have to go talk about it, like it sucks. Everyone's got to do it. But it's like, God damn, like just let him, you know, give him some time to just breathe and compose himself instead of, you know, instantly hitting him, hitting him with the, you know, you've been on IR. Like, what have you done for us all year? Like we haven't interviewed you because you haven't done anything. You've been on IR. And now it's just that was one of those things that really just rubbed me the wrong way. I don't know, Chris. I was pretty. I, I, I didn't uh, like the. I just it. didn't like the tone of the video, and I also didn't like. I, I was wondering what the point of Jenna Lane sharing it was, and I, um, you know, like, I don't know if she thought she was like that fucking war reporter from CNN. Exactly. Like, she, like exactly. Are, are, I wanted to be like, "Are you okay?" Uh, <laughs> yeah. You know, like after I'm sorry you had to go through that exchange. Uh, yeah. Cl- Clarissa Ward. Um, <laughs> you know, uh, but they just. Here's how this stuff goes in NFL locker rooms. So give people the background. I think there were a couple things at play here. Giovanni Bernard has been on IR all year, so he has not been available to the media, which is normal. 
but that does not mean he's not in the locker room. So the, the, the question I'm wondering is like, what happened before the video? The video, I mean, the, report, the reporters are in the wrong and coming out of the video, all this makes Giovanni Bernard look like is a great dude, um, an accountable dude. And that's all he owed them was a comment. And his comment was, it was on me. And, you know, unfortunately for the reporters, that's not a new revelation. I think anybody watching the game knew that Giovanni Bernard fucked that up. So it's not like you found anything new out. It's not like, you know, you you, you did some right. heroic thing. And, um, you know, locker room opens up 15 minutes after the game or whatever it is, or 20 minutes after the game. I don't know what it is, Bo, but, like, guys kind of get changed mm -hmm. as they're getting changed. They still bother you anyways in your towel and as you're getting your yeah. clothes on. Uh, but Giovanni Bernard looked fully clothed. It looked like he was ready to go. I don't know how quickly he got ready to go. I don't know if he was, like, kind of hiding from him, but – the the point is, he he. There was plenty of time to ask him that question. It looked like it was time for him him to get going and see his family because we have people oftentimes like twenty deep waiting for us outside. They're people that we we paid paid for to come to the game and and they're waiting and you know like, I feel like there might have been a, a situation where they waited too long to ask him the question, you know, and now he's trying to leave. I think also like yeah. He's been on IR, but that doesn't mean you ignore him like he's the invisible man. Uh, right. I also get the sense that they probably, nobody really established a relationship with Giovanni Bernard in that locker room. I don't know what happened. I'm speculating. The only reason I'm speculating, and I'm sure if Jenna Lane and some of those people in that video that seemed really agitated and mad at Giovanni mm -hmm. Bernard, which is the, the it's weird, kind of piling on. It's and the everyone, weirdest. Like, they were just following yeah. him like, hey, wait, yeah. hey, hey. Yeah, like, hey, hey, you owe hey. us this. You and owe he's, us this. He's we walking away. And, and you saw his face, but like, I'm sure if they were sitting here right now, they'd all say, oh, well, you're speculating. Oh, it's our job to interview players after the game. Like, well, we, no, this but is what we're. Ugh. I think you, I think they would be sitting here and they'd say, "Oh, you're speculating. You don't know what happened be, before the video and this that and there." Will you open the door to that speculation by po posting a video of y'all looking like assholes and not the mm. entire thing? So, like, I'm kind of wondering before how, if you were even bigger assholes to him at his locker, or if you waited yeah. a damn near hour. If he if it's the biggest story in the game, as Jenna Lane or whoever it was said. Um, mm -hmm. then you would have had him at the podium it, it, yeah. or you would have interviewed him right away. So like, obviously the guy's dressed, he's got his trucker hat on, he's got his outfit on, he's ready to go see his family. And that's a hard thing. Um, mm -hmm. I think a little empathy and a little emotional intelligence would go a long way. You, you're complaining about how, how fucking hard your job is sometimes. Well, you know, and I love the media. I had a really good relationship with the media. I know the media has a job to do, especially beat writers and people have to get a deadline in and the whole thing. Um, but here, here's a hot tip for you. If you have emotional intelligence and you build relationships with players, you probably have the answer, you know, a lot easier and a lot earlier. And guess what? You're not always going to get the player. Like there were guys that would hide in the bathroom when it was media yeah. time. Like when the media would come in, some dudes would go like to the other end of the building and just, and just stay in the locker just room. Or, you know, gone, if I didn't feel disappear. like, to, if I didn't feel like talking to the media, I'd go in there and play pool. So like. Yeah. You know, here's the deal. We might be we might be um, kind of required to talk to the media, but there's some days that you're not going to get everybody, and maybe not everybody's willing to talk. And sometimes it's okay to punt because now mm -hmm. you've ruined the the relationship with Giovanni Bernard, and I, you know, I, and maybe some of the other players. Exactly. Right? That's a great think, point. The the thing that frustrated me the most is it just seemed like they were trying to make him uncomfortable, trying to get him. You know, to that when he was leaving, you know, trying to get those sound bites, and then they all swarmed him. But I thought it was interesting because you watch, you know, Jacoby Myers after truly just one of the probably the worst play in his, I mean, definitely the worst play in his NFL career. Um, and he's, you know, in the Patriots, you know, in the locker room after the game, or I guess it was in, you know, Las Vegas, but and he's calmly addressing the media, and they're kind of not really being too pushy. They're treating him with a lot of respect because they know that that's literally a nightmare scenario for any player to, you know, kind of have a horrible, pub such a public play like that, and truly a nightmare for a player. Yeah. To, to, like, I have, you know, I'm getting fucking cold sweat just thinking about it. Um, and so to put a, a player in a position like that, it's it's kind of just a lose lose. The, the hero you know? of the video is the guy who's obviously the Bucks PR person who's just like, just ask Nelson. the question. 
Yeah. I'm like, yeah, yeah that, I'm like that that you want to know how I feel about this? Just ask your fucking question, okay? You guys <laughs> exactly. have no idea what it's like to be in the arena. Okay. I know the media has a hard job and the whole thing, and there's some people that are listening to this show and it might be peers of mine and the whole thing. I'm not talking about you. Uh, but what I am talking about is there's a there's a distinct difference than your biggest mistake at work and ours. Okay? Mm -hmm. You have no idea how it feels to make that mistake. No earthly idea. And so the fact yep. that he would stand up there with a smile on his face and, and answer calmly, especially after you treat him like a fucking child and run yeah. and walk him down in the locker room, you're lucky he even talked to you. And don't you're stop great. taking yourself so seriously. I mean, so yep. you, you, you report for the, you're reporting on a football game. Like it's, it's, this isn't, you're not the white house press briefing. So just <laughs> exactly. fucking relax. Um, and and anyways, they might have ruined that relationship. I always tell a story about when I was in Philly. I don't tell this story a lot, actually. But me and Derek Gunn are really cool. But, like, after a game, I had gotten dressed and the whole thing. And, you know, like, I had gotten my treatment, gotten an IV. I was really beat up. I had, I had, uh, I forget what it was. It was 2018, but it was after you were gone. And I was going through a stretch of the season where I was very frustrated by just, like, the whole situation. My individual yep. situation, the team, the way they were playing. It was after one of those tough losses. Maybe it was like Tennessee or something like that, and I didn't play well. And I, I walked out of the locker room, and this has been for a long-ass time. And I guess earlier in the day I had promised Derek Gunn, like, uh, you know, to pop by, but he didn't ask until like 90 minutes after the game when I'm like late already to go see these people, including people that I had set up for my charity to come see right. me. You know, a lot of these players have like charities. They 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 funnel through the post game, mm -hmm. so you get to go meet the player. And Derek kind of gave me, in my opinion, a look when I was like, I can't do it, and I snapped at Derek in the hallway. And yep. I think, if not for the fact that me and Derek had built this relationship day to day, you know, BSing with each other, him asking me how my life is, you know, like how's your family, the whole thing, we wouldn't have got over that little hurdle. But I, you know, I came back, talked to Derek. We squashed it. It was, it was easy. I was on D Gun's podcast recently. That's my guy, yeah. dude. This stuff happens. Disagreements yeah. happen. But you don't, you don't then go put it out there like some tabloid bullshit, self-aggrandizing. Look at me, damn. I, I, I'm Clarissa Ward. This is a really difficult job, and look at what an asshole this player is being. You guys work it out in private, and then you mm -hmm. might get this guy again in the future. Um, but you have to actually have built a relationship on the front end to have any chance to overcome little things like this. Agreed. So we saw uh, another uh, another kind of tweet uh, viral sensation, uh, but this one in Kansas City because uh, there was a the Wolf fan uh, for the Chiefs guy yeah. who dresses up in a wolf mask and goes every game at Chiefsaholic on Twitter. Uh, it was posted that he um, had robbed banks mm. in that mask, in that getup. <laughs> and then it was like, how many banks? Are we sure? Are you unsure? So it was verified that he's got one bank robbery at least, uh, and it was on the way to the Texans game. Um, so he, he drove to the Texans game, robbed on a the bank way, on the way. Yep, robbed a bank. And so, because everyone was like, where is he at in the game? No one knows, like, what, is everything okay? Is it cool? Because he always posted from the game, like a picture of him, at that Chiefs game that weekend, and no one had seen him for a couple hours, for uh, a day and a half or so, and then it was announced that he was he had been arrested for robbery. Um, so, are we? Is that the best um, kind of mascot to to rob a bank? Or we? Well, that's there, like that, that's first, like Chris Long going and robbing a bank in a dog mask. You know. So here's the deal. <laughs> Like, Anybody think you're about, famous for this? If you're gonna you're famous rob, for wearing a wolf mask and you're robbing banks, I love that. Robbing a bank it's is so not funny. hard. Really? No. That that's what you told me the last couple times. You know, you came back from doing it. I, I'm just I was telling surprised, you. But. Think about it. It's not hard. When it gets hard, is you don't rob two banks. You rob one bank. You rob two banks. You rob no banks. You rob one bank. You do it right, Doctor Seuss. You short. We were talking about, I don't know what stock, you, 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 you rob the bank and then you invest in something smart and then you, and then you lay low, right? And you definitely don't go to fucking Chiefs games in the mass that you robbed the bank in. 
I know it's like kind of the perfect crime. You blend right in, but like I love that. You yeah. have an online his, persona, man. It's his um, calling card, though. You know, ooh. he's really leaning into the whole. Uh, Who else has know, that ghetto? I would you know, go Jackson be... Deville if I could rob a bank That's and I had exactly... it because he repels and stuff like that. Like yeah. you know, the whole thing. Maybe I. I, I... <laughs> You you just rep- like like just get in and out like the Pink Panther. Uh-huh. You know? Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> the I mascot costume comes with all the all the hooks and the and the repelling yeah. equipment, so you're already set. Real quick though, it's not hard to rob a bank. I mean, think about it. Think about what it really takes to rob a bank. You find one that's got cash, right? I mean, I know you saw a, mo- a lot of movies recently, so that might be hinging your you know. No, I don't know if you saw not- banks uh, bank heist movie, but it's right there on Google. Hey, what time is this business busy? It's got the little bar graph. You find the one with the low bar, <laughs> then you get yourself a piece. You walk in there in a mask, <laughs> well, and, then, and, I- then, and and then you you gotta you gotta get a get you have to have a getaway driver. Right, yeah. and the getaway driver can't be waiting outside. I'd walk from it's down the Cushman. street. You're just robbing the bank, as a, and then you just hop in the Cushman. You know that they drive around the facility. Yeah, the Cushman, the little easy go. No, on, yeah, like, it might not be hard to rob a bank, but I feel like it's the hardest part is getting like getting continued, away. Yeah, yeah, continued evasion of the. Oh, I'm, yeah. I don't if I'm robbing a bank. How do I I'm robbing my money? I bury it. Cash app, baby. No, you're. you're I bury doing, the money for a little bit. Bat, I take little bits. I, I bury put the all money. It on, you're going to put all the money on the game, you know? It's like your little fun money. You're playing with house money, you're gambling with house money at that point. If I'm robbing a bank, I'm going to rob one in, in New England dressed as Patriot Pat because I already got the musket, you know? Yeah. Uh-huh. I'm ready to go. Yeah, but you Pat. You got your big little elephant shooter. You're right. Yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Uh, we'll, we'll get back to this laundering the money thing, Matt. Well, like a lot of the bills that are in banks are tracked, so you have to get different bills. Like even if you spend it or let's say use it like 10 years later, they'll be able to find you and know that it was used. So you have to figure out a way to get it from like. So obviously I just call you and I'm else. like, let's launder this money. How are we doing it? You stake me in the biggest poker game in yeah. Vegas and yep. we go play. Pretty much. Yeah. That's what we that. do. But they're aren't they going to see that? No, I, in your favorite movie, Come Hell or High Water, the bank rob- robbers in Texas, remember they go to the casino to like launder their money, essentially. And they say a bunch of cute shit along the way. <laughs> a bunch of pithy dialogue over <laughs> plot sharing. Actually, he does say something cute. He says, no, it makes me an Apache. Yeah, that's a good point, Reed. God damn. I could rob a bank easy, bro. Easy. <clears throat> easy. You just have to find... Uh, one you have to find a bank. Well, it depends on how much money. Like, are you robbing a bank? Yeah, cool. You could get out with like a hundred bucks, or are you trying to like change, like get away, get out with all that, all cash the money. money, all the money, or are you just trying to fund hard. your next no. road trip for the Kansas City Chiefs? Haven't you haven't you seen Point Break? You can't go to the vault. No, you can't go I, to the vault. Well, I, <laughs> if you go to the vault, that's that's the end. And you're you're calling Kingston on a, on a, on a phone. I got you on a wiretap right there. I'm not calling Kingston on the phone. Me and Kingston communicate like uh, they got walkie talkies. We got what we got. We went to Gander you know Mountain. Next we got walkie talkies. You know, t- <laughs> and then what you can do is you can set up a big diversion while you're robbing the banks. So the cops have to go to the diversion. Like actually, of I've been thinking about this for a while. So like, if you're gonna rob a bank, you need to wait for the biggest snowstorm possible. Get like, a snowmobile. Have it all ready. Have it all prepared. Mm. Call the police with a couple of fake diversions to bring them like way to the opposite side of the county mm-hmm. and then get it done in the snow. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Find a place that they're defunding the police. <laughs> huh? <laughs> funding my funding my uh funding my and, drug habit. And <laughs> do it like the uh place behind the pines, right? Drive into the back of the uh-huh. of the of the pale Love truck. That movie. Love so that you movie. just get easier getaway. Yeah. Reed, you're on. I like the snowmobiles idea, dude. We'll get some snowmobiles. It'll be like the Italian job, you know? Italian Except job, the Mini Coopers. Right? Yeah. <laughs> Except the Mini Coopers, you got to rip around on snowmobiles during Bo and Charlie's Ther- Theron, or uh, however you say yeah. that, are driving Charlie's around. Charlie's Theron. And, yeah, her. Yeah. yeah. That's interesting, Two guys. blondes on a, on a snowmobile. That's interesting. Dressed up like Sir Purr, you know? <laughs> Other mascots. <laughs> Swoops on a, on a matching one. Matching green snowmobile. KC, Bank robbing pod KC now. KC Wolf's going to prison. 
Speaking of robbing the bank, Chris, did you see the uh, 49ers rookie uh, dinner with the $370,000 bar tab? Yeah, my heart skipped the beat for a second, and I was like, God damn, these guys are just like some old NFL motherfuckers out here, huh? Seriously. I was uh, analyzing that receipt like it was a fucking tax return, looking at that like, how the hell you spend that much money? And then it came out, Eric Armstead tweeted out that the bill was like seven grand or something like that, and uh, they kind of split it amongst the vets and, you know, kind of got everybody with a little fake, uh, fake rookie meal hoax, but Eric Armstead kind of had me going. Eric Armstead's a good guy. He wouldn't let that D line group hit that, that dude for 300 plus thousand dollars. But the funniest thing is like some of the comments you get underneath that are like, he makes, you know, he's making $4 million a year. He can afford it. <laughs> yeah. Just shut the fuck up. <laughs> yeah. Just shut the fuck up. Just because somebody has more money than you doesn't mean you can just tell them what to do with it or, or you know, like, or what's okay and what's not okay. That's $300,000, uh, yeah. hypothetically. Also, um, you know, I had to do 20 on my rookie dinner, and uh, I was like, damn, I got off easy for a second. Dude, mine was seven grand I'm at Ocean Prime in Philly, and I've never been back to an Ocean Prime since. That's how butthurt I am. You don't even eat bill. seafood anymore, do you? Yeah, I, I, I'm fucking every time I see a seafood tower at a restaurant, I have flashbacks. You knock it over. Vietnam. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I walked by the Ocean Prime in, in Philadelphia and just had flashbacks of Fletcher. That's how I feel about fucking King Crab and Emmanuel Acho ordering three bottles of wine to go. Oh my wait God. a second! <laughs> Talk break. about a code break. That's a yeah. wait. Acho was in your. D- oh my God! Ha- yeah. Hey, listen. You know. Listen. It's I, all right. I'm still not butthurt about it. Fucking ten years later. I I, I uh, well look at us now. What is he on TV making a bunch of money, Bo? Well, look what you're doing. <laughs> yeah. All right, so exactly. like uh, I'm doing the same thing. Yeah, man. you are. <laughs> but uh, but but I, I I cut that shit off. I remember dudes were trying to take bottles of Louis Thirteenth, and I walked over to this linebacker who was not as big as me, and I was like, "That's not going to happen." <laughs> yeah. I was like, "This isn't like a library." We're not checking. Remember, uh, we're not checking Louis the Thirteenth out, brother. We're, BG, you're gonna uh, go to your car now. The dinner's ordered over. A, BG ordered two cheese t- ch- two cheese uh, cheesecakes to go. Mm, one they for good. him and one for his wife. Yeah, and he was so apologetic about it. I was like, "Oh, you're good, man." Yeah. Like, you're, yeah. But other people were corking up the wine. Getting other people were stealing. Uh, stealing the like, like little like fucking glasses that the, yeah. the fancy shot glasses that the louis comes in and stuff and i'm sitting over there just fuming with any you know, rookie get... hazing or rookie dinner stuff bo it's like if you're gonna enforce it you have to be willing to fight a grown man who's probably a lot hungrier than you Seriously. you know especially if you're like an older vet so whether it was cutting people's hair or rookie dinners like i just don't get my jollies that way you know me neither and those those events are you know one second away from getting real physical real fast you know with a lot of dudes Mm -hmm. you gotta you gotta be ready all right well that's all the sports for today uh well i lied dawson knox is on and we'll talk about the bills and then we'll finish uh, and talk about a little christmas Talk about some Christmas. I love talking about Christmas stuff here, Chris. Christmas. Look at, I wish you could see my little view. I got the tree right here. I got a fire. I got some stockings. You already up showed over us. There. Maybe you'll show us, right. Bo. You want it again? Here, here. Take mm. it. Check it out. Check it out. There's mm. the tree. White lights. You know, some presents. Yeah, wrapping paper. Yeah, a little, s- little snow globe. Yeah. Hey, you just fucking say that shit to my face. We'll fucking. <laughs> Dawson Knox, everyone. <laughs> Yo. What's up? How's it going? What's up, brother? Nice to meet you. I'm Chris. This is Bo. How we doing? Sweet. Nice to meet you guys. Appreciate yeah, we, y'all having me on. Oh, dude. Hey, big fans of you, man. Big fans of y'all's team. Thank you. Big fan of yours as well. Thanks, brother. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll get... We'll we get catching a... you after practice or what? What's going on? Dude? Yeah. He's oh, working. yeah. We just finished up practice. Coach threw us a little bone today. We had a little kind of modified walkthrough type deal. Done Ooh. now. No afternoon meetings. Ooh. Everyone's pretty hyped up. We're going to be home by 2 o'clock. That's oh. incredible. Not, a, not if we have anything to say about it, man. <laughs> Depends on how this hey, goes, I guess. Hey, listen, <laughs> exactly. man. Nothing like getting a bone. Nothing like getting a modified fucking walkthrough. 
Yeah. yeah. That's the, oh, it's that's beautiful. Best news nothing, in the world. Nothing better to increase some team camaraderie than cutting down a <laughs> Wednesday. Yeah, so no question. Super excited. No oh, question. Yeah. Um, let's start with let's start with Saturday, dude. Like, was it actually even cold for you? <laughs> um, I mean, yeah, definitely cold. Um, but last year, I think I think it was the New England game, first round of the playoffs. It was like negative fifteen or something crazy. Yeah, that was a different type of cold where, like, you couldn't have your hands out of the warmer for like ten seconds before they started going numb. So after you experience that. Anything that's, you know, in the 20s is pretty solid. Um, yeah. I know it's kind of – it's hard to think about. But, yeah, 20s and above, that's beautiful for Buffalo. How do you – how did you make this – how did you become, like, the I don't wear sleeves guy? You're an, Are you a Nashville boy? Yeah, I'm a, Nashville I'm a no guy. sleeves guy. Okay. Just so you know, he, I'm a no sleeves well, he's guy. Oh, Wisconsin, you'd love to yeah, see that. Wisconsin yeah, exactly. guy, so uh, – Madison, know, Minnesota. I, I, just, I, I just never – like, even in college, I mean, I played at Ole Miss, so it never really got cold down there, but I would always go sleeves. We had a couple cold games. Like, we played in Nashville against Vanderbilt. It was in the 20s, and for some reason, I just decided not to wear sleeves. And um, now it's kind of like – it's kind of been given to me as, like, my thing. So now if I go out there with sleeves on, everyone's going to start freaking out and think something's wrong. So it's kind of yeah. something I guess I just have fallen into. I can't disappoint the people now. One, uh, yeah, no, uh, never, one, never put the sleeves on, Dawson. Leave them <laughs> off, man. It makes, makes your arms pop a lot and gives you, like, plus five on toughness. But <laughs> plus I, five. I, I, always, you also, I always used to uh, lube up the arms with the Vaseline. Yeah, you know? yeah. The, I, was, I, was, warm, I was wondering. Aquaphor. Yeah. Stuff. And it makes your arms kind of pop, too. But I was wondering. I know. It gives a little glisten in the lights. Precisely. <laughs> that's exactly right, man. But if you – I was wondering if you guys do that as skill players because, I, I mean, I assume you probably wouldn't want that shit to get on your hands if you're trying to catch the ball, you know? Yeah, I haven't put a ton of that on. I'm sure Josh would not be a fan of the guys catching the ball to have Vaseline all over the place. So next time he takes a snap, it's – Exactly. It wouldn't be ideal for him. But, um, but yeah, I mean, I think as a ball carrier, you don't want to wear sleeves either. You get a little it. slick. Yeah, that's yeah. what um, I wondered. That's why I wondered, like, two is out there in sleeves – and, you know, Josh, I think Josh wears sleeves and like it scares the shit out of me because I'm like, I just imagine trying to carry the football and, yeah. you know, like it's it's sketchy. Yeah, I know. I don't know. I mean, I, I've seen uh, Naheem Hines. He's got these sleeves that have like receiver glove material on Ooh. the inside. So Ooh. maybe maybe that's like a new cutting edge technology thing we got going. All right. Did, so this actually. is fucking weird. But have you heard of people using Viagra to stay warm? Have you heard yes. this rumor? What's yeah. up? With, last, did people do last that? Year was the first time I heard about it. Do people do that? Is that real? To be honest, I don't know of anyone on our team that does it. I think if that might be <laughs> like a that might be like a personal decision that people kind of yeah. want to keep quiet. I mean, I'd be worried about other things beyond yeah. beyond just yeah. staying warm. I mean, yeah. could you uh, imagine? Like, I'm already I'm already boned up during a game anyway. <laughs> get the fuck out of here, Bo. Bo, get out of yeah, here. Whatever dude. you gotta do to increase performance. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. What about what about the what about are you so are you anti dome stadium? because I'm anti dome stadium. So do you like the cold? Do you see it as an advantage or just something you're just um, like uh you know uh, well I'm big pro grass me too. I know that's kind of been like a hot topic this year. Um, Finally. So hopefully if it's going to be outside, they'll be putting a grass field in for us. And I know I think it's not going to be done until like 2026. But um, honestly, don't mind playing outside. The thing that sucks is when the wind starts whipping. Because our stadium's built to where like one of the end zones is kind of open. And that wind comes in there. It's like a – it can be like a tornado. Like there was a game last year – I think there were gusts up to like 50 miles per hour. I mean, our, our the New England goal, game, maybe. Yeah, yeah, the first New England game. Yeah. Um, our kicker was warming up. We saw a couple of videos. He's on the 20 yard line. The ball stops midair. Yeah, ends up in the end zone. Doesn't even go yeah. out of bounds. So yeah. it's like that win can be a difference maker. But I don't mind playing outside. So hopefully, whatever stadium they're building us has a little. Yeah, that new, that new England game. Uh, I bet you were like, "Okay, I'm not getting a lot of touches this game. We're just gonna be, yeah, we're yeah, gonna I be think, running the ball today." I think Mac Jones went like two for three on the day that game. Yeah, mm -hmm. that, that was wild. Yeah. Um, how about the Detroit uh, trip that you guys had to make for Thanksgiving? Because that was a real big snowstorm. Eric Wood was telling me dudes were getting shell like c coming up in snowmobiles 
to pick up guys yeah. to get them out of their houses. Like Deion Dawkins had to had to get picked up or something like that. Like, yeah. what were some of the adventures that guys had to take to get to the airport, and how close was it, you know, as far as not getting there? Yeah, so I've got a pretty long driveway, and with six feet of snow, like our plow, like my plow service wouldn't even touch it. They're like, it's too much snow for us. We legally can't do it. I don't know what the deal was, but I look outside and I see like 10 of my neighbors just in an assembly yeah. line with snowblowers and shovels just going Bill's to town. Mafia. Bill's Mafia showed up big time. Big shout That's out. So cool. um, That's so cool. And they, I mean, it probably took an hour for them to get from their house to my house. Just dig it. Yeah. So me and one of my buddies, um, they told us not to stay downtown because apparently downtown was supposed to get hit harder. Um, so one of my buddies that lives downtown stayed at my house and we're out there walking through the trenches of snow with our suitcases above our head. And one of our teammates picked us up at the street, but I think there was a handful of guys that had to be picked up on snowmobiles. That's I kind of, I honestly kind of wanted to get picked up on a snowmobile. I, mean, <laughs> yeah. I thought that, yeah. I thought that was going to be a pretty good man. story, but for <laughs> whatever reason, good. I didn't get picked as one of the snowmobile guys. That would have been cool. What did you think? Uh, here's what I thought Saturday when the snowballs fl- started flying and there were people, you know, the ref was, the ref said, hey, we're going to penalize y'all. If oh, if I'm a Miami people. fan, I'm throwing as many snowballs as I can. Yeah, that's what I said, dude. I was like, yeah. no, I was like, oh, this is gonna be bad, dude. If I'm, if so, I'm, a, yeah, yeah, yeah. Apparently, they told. I think they either told um, Coach McDermott or someone. They were like, hey, we we can't actually enforce that. We just have to say that for them to stop throwing snowballs. Oh, so I think it was just kind of like a say it to get the fans to calm down. At, at some point in the game, Josh is looking in the stands, you know, trying to get them to stop. And the PA guy is like, Josh Allen wants you to stop throwing snowballs. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think we saw another snowball after that. So. That's so good. That man, can make it all, that man can make yeah. it all shut down. I was like, but these people oh, yeah. are, are hammered. There's dudes with their shirts off. You think they're <laughs> yeah. scared of a penalty? They're not worried. Actually, yeah. that, that could hurt the one thing they love, the Buffalo Bills. So. Right. So yeah, that, a, that was a good like psychology play by the refs. Yeah. But no if question. I'm a Miami fan and that was real, yep. I'm like, Yep. Hitting everybody I can with snowballs. So like, you, I'd be worried about a snowball with like a dildo packed in there. That's what I was going to say. <laughs> have, you, have you seen a dildo yet this year? Because you've seen snowballs. We haven't seen a dildo in a couple years in Buffalo. People are starting to call them bildos. Uh, <laughs> I think that might be a Pat McAfee thing. Yeah, it might be. Um, it might be. That's but funny. I, oh. I that's a- personally haven't seen one yet this year. We have a funny picture of one of our trainers having to pick one up. I think it was from last year. <laughs> um <laughs> picking it up like it's a bomb like get the yeah and funny there. story i think i think her grandma like accidentally posted a picture of her granddaughter holding it because she was so proud to see her granddaughter on the screen so i think that was actually posted either on facebook or instagram or something before it quickly got taken down but oh, um but beautiful. i have not so seen fun. i have not seen a Bildo yet this year, so you I never know. That. Snowballs have the snowballs snowballs here. have no give, you know, especially if they're like ice. The dildos at least they kind of do this. <laughs> yeah, at least there's like I feel like this the snowball might hurt more. Absorption. Yeah, shock absorption. <laughs> All right, so All right. so <laughs> Daw- Dawson, what what's um I don't know how to ask you about about Josh, honestly. I mean he's just an alien, man. And yeah. I like he's just probably the most fun player I've ever seen play football, at least since I've been in a league because of everything he adds to your offense. And my favorite part of the game Saturday, I don't know if this was an intentional conversation, but like the run game wasn't getting going. And then there was a drive late where it almost felt like Josh was like, fuck it, I'll do it. And, <laughs> yeah. and he just started tucking the ball. Like what's the conversation going before you go out for that drive? And is it like, Hey, we're going to jam the ball down their throats and it's going to start with you 17. You know, um, there wasn't really anything specifically said like that, but Josh just has such a good feel during the game that yeah, like he knows if certain things aren't working, he can take the game over himself. Um, I think case Keenum had a pretty awesome, like, quote or something on the sideline to Josh is like man this is your game you can take over whatever the hell you want take the game into your hands and I guess that kind of got some wheels turning in Josh's head like maybe I can just do it all myself which he can yeah. and we've seen that yeah. you know every single game this year but we keep telling him to slide but the dude won't do it I mean he's taking off running over linebackers and jumping over the big boy yeah yeah so we we try to 
we give them little incentives here and there to slide during the week. Like we had one of our teammates had to show up to a walkthrough and just a jock strap if Josh slid. <laughs> and I think and I think that was like the only week he actually slid on a play. Who was who so, was who was it? Can we ask? <laughs> they asked to Renee or Renee, stay anonymous. Oh, um, it was you, wasn't it, Dawson? It, was, it yeah. wasn't me. I would own up to it if it was me. Oh, that's so um, funny. That's so I'll, funny. Uh, I'll, I'll check with him and come back to you. That's so funny. Out. Yeah, well, that's that's a brilliant strategy to get Josh yeah. to slide. I mean, the guy, is, he loves to run people over so much. The only way <laughs> to get him to stop is that. That's incredible. How about when you – what, at what point did you start, like – I forget when people started doing this, pushing quarterbacks, but you're like the – you're his like uh, push guy now. <laughs> I'm the designated push guy. Yeah, yeah. I don't know how that started. I feel like that's just this year that people are yeah. doing that. Yeah, um, yeah. We had uh, we had our fullback do it one game, and it worked last game. So I'm probably now the You're designated up. pusher. So I just yeah. what the unfortunate thing is we had a pusher for that. Um, it was a Vikings game that we were back on our own like one foot line. Yep. We had Gabe pushing, and the snap was fumbled. So Gabe's there pushing Josh, who's trying to recover the fumble. Uh, yeah. but that was uh, like the only yeah. possible bad thing that could happen from having a pusher. But um, but now it worked pretty well. We actually took our victory snap in shotgun this week. So we had a couple guys back there spotting the ball. But, yeah, I guess I'm the designated pusher now for victory stuff or what about what about, what about scramble drill for you guys because that's such a big part of yep. what you guys do the play breaks down i know you're a yeah. big part of he's looking for you the whole thing like what's that kind of process is it you practice it during the week and then is it non it's non-verbal are there are there cues you give each other yeah is that a big chemistry yeah. thing just working together so much or how much that's scripted yeah most of that would be a chemistry thing um i think just fourth year of being with him, his fifth year in the system. Um, obviously playing with a guy like him, we know he can extend any play that he wants to. Um, uh, so I, it's just one of those things that you can practice a lot just based on route concepts. Like if you're the deep guy, you're supposed to work back to the ball. If you're the shallow guy, there's no one behind you. You're supposed to work up the sideline and go deep for him. So there's a couple black and white rules that you follow. Like if you're coming from across the field you're supposed to work downhill so the db can't undercut you just little things like that but it's also kind of a feel thing too like in the red zone you're we're essentially supposed to build a box in the back so like back pylon front pylon and then you know front and back about 10 yards apart so it's just kind of a feel thing with josh what are you saying in your head the last play before the half because i was like I, you know because i was pulling for y'all and i was like no 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 Yes, like there were what three seconds, five seconds oh, to go, yeah. and, and he just like fuck it, I'm gonna do this myself. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So I'm out there scrambling around in the end zone. I actually slipped on a snowball, so I'm oh, like, <laughs> like I'm trying to work back to the front pylon and just wipe out. Um, yeah. And I look up expecting him to have thrown it away or to have stepped out, you know, to save time for a field goal. Yeah. But he's still gone. So you know, in our head, we're like he's going to get cussed out when he gets back to the sideline. But then he makes that play. Everyone goes nuts. To the rookie, um, James Cook, who made a huge play for us. Um, that was one of those where, you know, Coach McDermott would have blown a gasket if we didn't convert it. But no it's one of those things where it's like, cheer you on if you did it, but you mess it up and you're yeah. getting tall. All's well that ends well. Yeah, exactly. no doubt. That's what we well, always say. I got one say. for you. Uh, Dawson, I was talking to my buddy Cam Brady, who's a tight end for the Bucks and – talking about you before this and he mentioned that you're a really good hurdler and he wanted me to bring that up so i'm just kind of wondering are you just waiting for one of those hurdles to just go horribly wrong you know uh, <laughs> i'm a not terrible. trying to speak that into existence or anything like that but i'm a terrible hurdler um uh, i don't know about that brother yeah i've you seen know, you that, hurdle uh, a couple people man the, hey, come on now no the jets game um it was like 20 seconds left we hadn't scored i think it was like on the you know, getting close to four or five yard line. I'm like, I, you know, I got to get in somehow. So I just kind of like closed my eyes and went for it. Thankfully, guy hit me just the right way to where I didn't land on my head. Um, oh, but it works. Just taking a page out of Josh's playbook. But my rookie yeah, exactly. year, my rookie year, I think it was at the Titans. Um, I like hesitated on a hurdle, <laughs> which is like the last thing you want to do. I was about to go off one foot and the DB kind of stopped. 
And so it was already too late. So I ended up kind of going off of two feet and uh, just ended up getting racked about as hard as you could possibly get racked <laughs> in a football game. Um, so that was my we'll first that attempt at a hurdle in the league. Yeah, that, I don't know why I brought that one up. but Well, the only way um, to learn how to hurdle is to, you know, is to get power. Trial and sometimes. error. Yeah, yeah that's that's trial and error. You gotta, trial you gotta try, it's like people in the backyard on dirt bikes and shit. You know, like you're going to wreck jumping <laughs> yeah, over the, the right. above ground pool once or twice. You know? Yeah, you're going to um, know if you yeah. tried it a couple times. Um, do you have fun watching Brian Dable and what he's doing in New York? Do you, are you guys kind of like, you know, pulling for him, uh, you know, when, when he, when he gets on TV? Yeah, absolutely. I think everybody in here has a lot of respect for him. Um, he always brought the energy for us in the locker room, on the sideline. Um, even in practice, he would get everybody going. He's always rapping biggie. Um, you know, he, he's just doing something. Wow. To, oh yeah. You know, and. So he's always got a cigar in his mouth after the game in his truck. Um, so he's definitely a player favorite. So anytime we see them win, it's it's pretty fun. And um, they uh, they had a big win against the Commanders, right? Yeah, yep. yeah, it was um, awesome. Yeah, it was a yeah, great win. yeah, that was another crazy one. But everyone loves seeing him win. Yeah, no, he was in New England when I was up there, and I really thought like, not there's anything wrong with New England coaches, but he was just different. You know, like yeah, he just yeah, has yeah. a different kind of swagger to him. And, yeah, uh, and he's a ex- Buffalo guy too. He's from here. Yeah, so. so he loved being up there. I know. Oh yeah, yeah, he's yeah. King, Everybody loves. Him. He does have that like particular coach swagger that's it's hard to hard to replicate. Who who are your favorite um, tight ends to watch in the league that are kind of in your age range? <sighs> um, it's always fun watching Travis, um, just because his routes are so. Like I've I've talked with him. A, a, decent amount of time just on what he thinks on certain concepts and stuff. And he likes to call himself Picasso. You know, he's going to do something that might not look exactly like a human, but you know, there might be one ear up here, but it's going to, it's going to work. Um, so that's just a chemistry thing that he has with Patrick too, that, you know, it might be a completely different route than they practice, but somehow they're on the same page and it works out. But, um, love watching George Kittle's film. Um, you know, in my head, he's one of the most well-rounded tight ends in the league, the way he blocks. Um, even in pass protection, he's really solid. Um, and, I mean, watching freak athletes like Darren Waller and Kyle Pitts, too. So, I yeah. mean, there's there's guys around the league that can do it all. But um, I'd say Travis is probably my favorite to, you know, take a few notes from. What about, uh, like, when you're a young player, you know, like rookie year, things like that? Is there a guy that you kind of honed in on and maybe like a vet who's retired now or anything like that that you really try to model your game after? Anyone come to mind there? Uh, you know, honestly, I've never really looked at one guy and tried to model myself after because, I mean, I looked at a lot of Gronk film, but I'm not mm. – you know, six, seven, two, eighty. Exactly. Yeah. Um, right. Exactly. You know, and I looked at, you know, a bunch of Travis film, but it wasn't my seventh or eighth year in the league learning how to, you know, read coverages like him. So it was kind of like taking bits and pieces of different um, guys' games and not really taking one guy in particular and trying to model my game after. But um, I did watch a bunch of Gronk film just because he's, in my head, he's the greatest tight end of all time. Um, just yep. what he was able to do, um, it was beyond impressive. So it was always fun watching him. All right, to, before we let you go with Christmas coming up, I uh, wanted to ask you a Christmas question or two here. Uh, first off, how old were you when you realized, um, spoiler alert for any of the kids in the backseat <laughs> listening to the show, that Santa's not real? Yeah, big spoiler alert. Uh, <laughs> it's an adult you know, honestly, podcast. Honestly, I don't remember. I don't remember, but I felt so betrayed. <laughs> I, was, I, I mean, I don't know. I was probably... 14? <laughs> <laughs> I was almost driving the car. Um, yeah. Yeah, I, well, I don't know, probably like nine, ten. That's ten, still ten, late, yeah. Dawson. That's yeah, fucking late. I was, I was the first. I was the. I was the first child in the family. Oh, yeah, so yeah, I was, yeah, yeah. I, it might not have been that long. Um, yeah. But I just. I mean, we had like the little elf on the shelf thing. Yep. Um. So that was my biggest. Like that was my first question. I was like, all right, if Santa's not real, how are these elves moving? And were, and, of all the things, bro. Like, not just the. That was the, the, the first uh, question I had. Not how there's one guy that delivers stuff down a chimney to everyone. It was why is my elf moving by himself? All right, and then next, 
white lights or multicolored lights? Oh, that's a tough question. I think you got to go like just on your Christmas tree or like. Yeah, I think, Bo, how did you frame this? You elitist so, fuck. Chris and I got into this a little bit because my family, we're very against multicolored lights. My mom thinks they're trashy. And Chris is, uh, tr- Chris is, you know, trailer trash. So he he's a big multicolor lights guy. But Fuck I'm you. more of a white light purist, you know. So I think that's been I think white lights debate. on the Christmas tree, but everything else like front yard, you got to go crazy with the colors. I think you got to mix yeah. it up. But yeah. I like it's a very safe I, answer, Dawson. You know, I respect. Now, that. now I think about it, I don't even remember what our family does, but <laughs> <laughs> I think we're all over the place. I think it's yeah. probably multicolored. Well, you're gonna be working on Christmas for a long time, buddy. So I, you yeah, know, I hope think so. Have, yeah, yeah. So, um, yeah. well, keep up the great work, man. And uh, until that stud seventeen, we said hello, and and uh, oh, well. we love watching you two play and connect with each other on the field, man. So. Best of luck and uh, Merry Christmas to you, brother. Yeah, Merry Christmas. Appreciate you guys. Nice to meet y'all. Ho, 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 guys. It's almost Christmas, so we're going we're gonna to do a couple Christmas mailbag-type questions, and then we're going to cast uh, Christmas characters from popular culture as NFL players, or NFL players as Christmas characters from popular culture. Does it have to be a player? I was hoping it could be a coach, too. It could too, be a maybe. coach. Okay. It could be a personality. You know? Oh. Yeah, it could be an NFL personality. What about uh, ex-NFL players? Could be ex-NFL players. I've always seen myself as a little bit of a future mall Santa, you know? <laughs> Would you be bad Santa? I could be, you know, yeah. on a bad, catch me on a bad day. Yeah, no question. Uh, <laughs> all right, so a couple of the ones I have here is, well, one one I have for you, Bo, because you oh, have, man. you you. I would imagine that when you were a kid, you had a really – well, you still have kind of like a childlike mind. Um, <laughs> when did you accept or learn that Santa wasn't real? And actually, I want to go around the room here. At what age? Spo- spoiler alert, Chris. What the fuck? Well, we're deep First, in the- I'm hearing about this. Santa's not real? We're deep in the podcast. Listen, if kids are riding in the car and you get this show on, again, at your own risk. But also, kids, you in the back seat. Santa's real if you Santa's real if you make it real. You know, it's the idea of Santa. The magic of Santa is always real, Chris. Yeah, but like say Santa's not real. When did you find that out? I think I was in like second uh, probably third grade, which I feel like is kind of late, you know. That's late. Is it, it late? Wasn't, <laughs> yeah. I, I feel like that's I'm just a dumbass or maybe I, I wanted to believe, you, you know, just but to- I remember I just remember there wasn't like any sort of epiphany, you know. I didn't see mom kissing kissing Santa under the Christmas tree or anything like that, you know how that song goes. Um, <laughs> but I think I just kind of realized one day, like, yeah, there's no way there's this mythical man that's flying around every, you know, to every single house delivering presents, you know, over the course of one night. And I kind of just woke up and was like, yeah, this shit's not real, you know. There wasn't really any sort of big epiphany. Yeah, I think once I saw like a map of the world. <laughs> and uh, conceived like how long it takes to travel from one place to another in the world population and started doing a little calculations in my little bunk bed there, uh, I decided it was impossible. And then also, like, not everybody's got a chimney. So what's up with that? Think you, about yeah. it. Do you guys have older siblings? I know Chris doesn't, but, Bo, do you have any older siblings? I have a brother that's, you know, a year older than me. See, and for me, it got ruined knew. by the older siblings. They, they were told like, you? Yeah, they were like, you idiot. You believe in that? Are you kidding me? Did Ann do it? Yeah. That's fucked up. I agree. <laughs> it really is fucked up. That's a code yeah. break. That's, That's a, code... a huge Christmas code break. That's like <sighs> the biggest Christmas code break there is. What, yeah, well, for me, it was, I, I took the calculations, and I camped out at the top of the stairs, and I watched, and I saw the whole thing, and I came down in the morning, and the Christmas wrapping paper you know your parents try to have like oh this this is santa wrapping paper and this yeah. is it but it but it, it was uh i saw a guy with a flat top unless santa used to be a big cop <laughs> that looked like my dad uh <laughs> he was the one putting the wrapping paper on the santa presents so did you tell howie and kyle no because i, I kept it, it i in. kept it g bro i got a responsibility as an older yeah. brother i kept it g reed when did you find out um sorry about- sorry if you if no, you three minutes yet. ago. Is yeah, when I, <laughs> um, I didn't know that he wasn't real, and that ruins a lot of things for me. 
uh, now nah, probably in like first grade or something, but the NORAD Santa tracker kept it alive for a while, like a fleeting thought. What is that? You, it's, it's this thing. So NORADs, uh, I think it's like, uh, forget what NORAD is, but it's, it's, they, they do this Santa tracker every year. It's like a government, government, um, uh, is that like a, a flight government. tracker? Yeah, kind of, but NORAD's like a government arm thing, um, government business. Uh, but they do a flight tracker for Santa every year and they make it up and they're like, oh, Santa's over Canada right now. He's coming and now he's over the, the Northeast and now he's over here. He was just spotted in Georgia and now he's your account will Your account will be suspended. We don't dox people. <laughs> <laughs> Whatever the fuck he sounds. Yeah. Stupid fucking voice. They're going to tra- They're gonna cancel his Twitter account, you know yeah. what I mean? Santa, Spock, because they're tracking him. You can't dox Santa. So right now, if you go to NORAD, NORADSanta.org on the 24th, if you go on the 24th, the night of the 24th, you'll be able to f- track Santa's flight around the world. Oh, that's interesting, Reed. I might try that on my kids. Yeah. What I'm realizing is that Waylon's six years old. He's probably going to figure it out pretty soon. Yeah. Damn, that was quick. And then he's going to realize be- that you've been lying to him. Yeah, you know what? It's a little white lie. It's a little white lie. Um, a little red and white lie. Yep. I, I, uh, what about Christmas lights, white or colored lights? That's a huge, huge uh, point of contention in my family, Chris. And sorry to the listeners out there that have, you know, multicolored lights, but the Allen family has decided that multicolored lights are trashy. Fuck you guys. And and white lights are classy. And we do classy Christmas. I'm sitting in my parents' house right now. It's really cozy. I, Took a little picture of my podcast and set up today. I'm really feeling the Christmas vibes. I got my camera set up on a little Christmas present right here. Two bow. Love mom and dad. Can't wait to see what's in that one. Uh, but we're a big white light family. Multicolor lights, boo. You know, not a fan. What are you talking about on the outside of the house? The outside of the house, but then also like on your Christmas tree. You know, here, let me give you a little, a little sneak peek into what we're working with here. Like, I don't know if you can catch this, but look at that. You know, it's I got, ugly. A, I got a flare. fire. It's ugly. Yeah, I got a snow globe. I'm looking at. It's kind of now, nice. I got a bunch to the of left. snow we outside. See, yeah, we want to see the snow too. Uh, yeah, I don't know. Yes. Show us yeah. the tundra. Now that's Christmas. I um, I'm a colored light guy, man. Now my wife, she's a white light person. You know, I, we we both grew up in the suburbs, but she just yeah. she, but she just. I mean, the house looks beautiful. There's some white lights outside. It's undeniable that it's visually pleasing. But the the white trash in me. Uh, that I just can't get away from. Uh, definitely likes the colored lights, and I don't think it's you- trashy. I, I, if you, if that's what you're inferring, then maybe that's what it is. But I, I like the colored lights. I thought you'd maybe be a green light guy, Chris. No, I didn't even know there were green light people. Green um, light. What is the biggest code break telling on Santa? Gotta Probably. be. Probably. I'm thinking. Not Another getting a gift break. for somebody that got you one sometimes. That's fucked up, yeah. though. What about Christmas cards? Like, I got Christmas cards. I start getting Christmas cards, and oh, here's the biggest Christmas code break to me. I don't want to know how successful your kids are. Not interested. They're beautiful. You have a beautiful family. Um, I'm sure they're great. I don't care about the kid's GPA. He's in second grade. Okay, like, yeah, he's doing great at sports. Uh, he's probably not going to the pros. Just, just send us a picture and uh spare me the the details that's and what, also that's what you should put on every one of your cards x like uh a certain whatever the certain percentage of ncaa athletes do not go pro in something other than sports <laughs> yeah and send that back to everybody else who sends you just, like yeah. tommy's <laughs> oh, Johnny's oh, oh. being really good he's playing travel baseball yeah well, oh. christmas reality check courtesy of c long hey just so you know your kid's not he's probably not even gonna make varsity your no. man jv get no. used to it no, and you and you know what uh, you know what you know what really smart kids do, they they get their good grades and they just they shut up about it, you know. I don't need to. <laughs> I, my, I don't. Yeah, like what if my kids doesn't? What if my kid well, doesn't have good grades? While we're on the topic, I, you know, I just finished up my finals, my HR class. I got an A in one of them and an AB in the other one. So yeah. I'm gonna put that on my Christmas card. Talk Little Bo, a he's growing up so fast. Yeah, talk uh, about but, a gift, hey. Matt says. <laughs> Here's a Christmas code break for you. One that I'm guilty of. My family is uh, kind of like sneaking in the, you know, looking around trying to figure out what your presents are before they've been wrapped. So like my they were my parents really had to hide the presents growing up because like they always put them in the back of their closet in this one little spot. 
we would sneak up there and look at them and That's figure out what break. they were. Yeah. So then they started doing decoy presents or, you know, I had one Christmas where my, my folks got me something small, but they put it in a huge box with like a bunch of weights and stuff like that. So I was rattling it around trying to figure out what was in there. Yeah. You can't really so get anything by, Waylon, by heard young about, Waylon heard about the, the coal thing the other day. And Meg was like, yeah, my dad, he got coal one year. He wasn't a good boy. And Waylon was like, Oh really? He was like, well, Coal's not too bad. You can make energy with it. Wow. Yeah. That's smart. You just triggered a memory for me. We were at my grandparents' house, and my uh, brother was up early, emptied my stocking out, hit it, and put coal in it. That's really fucked up. <laughs> yeah. I mean, that's really <laughs> fucked up. You guys had some... That's a, that's a Grinch move. Fuck, you had a fucked up childhood, Matt. You had older siblings yeah, telling you Santa wasn't real. Yeah. <laughs> coal in your stocking. Uh what's what's next I, yeah I, uh, impressive for a kid uh, assuming your brother wasn't very old at the time to get coal to get his hands on some coal yeah where did he get that coal yeah. i'm assuming from the grill yeah you're right charcoal i saw yeah. the i yeah. saw the best video some recently of this, <laughs> this young british kid who was on the naughty list and it was kind of like that he said he's gonna get coal for christmas i gotta send you this chris i mean this is a little off topic this kid is hilarious. He's talking shit to Santa, talking about he's going to uppercut his beard right off. <laughs> it's the funniest shit in the world. I got to send this to you. It's um, pure Christmas gold. I want to. I want to cast. I want to cast some some characters here. So we we put together a little list of characters. We took ten minutes amongst ourselves uh, and tried to cast NFL players as these these Christmas Christmas characters. I have some of these are kind of redundant, but I have Scrooge. I've got Tiny Tim. Some of these people I had to figure out who they were because unlike most people, I don't think I watched a lot of different Christmas movies. We just we just put It's a Wonderful Life in the hopper and just re, rinse, rinse and repeat every Christmas. Um, and I think that was uh, my dad's way of saying appreciate what the fuck you have, kids. <laughs> Here's a Christmas code break for you, Chris. I've never seen that movie. Yeah, well, your parents weren't poor. You know, my dad actually, my dad was like, uh, hey, son. It could yeah. be worse. Yeah, here's, here's a black white and white lights. movie about a guy who almost kills himself and then decides that uh, eh, it's not that bad. <laughs> I gave you the whole plot. He likes that, Deer Hunter, and Lawrence of Arabia. Oh, my God, dude. <laughs> my dad, the dark movies. Um, All right, so who'd you guys put as a – let's start with Scrooge. Scrooge? Grumpy guy who just ruins Christmas? Carl Cheffers. Carl Cheffers. Wow. <laughs> yeah, the the official. That's the first guy that comes to mind. I mean, here's, here's I... holiday. Uh-huh. Yeah, look at him. He's smiling. We don't believe you. You're not happy. You're going to ruin somebody's Sunday. Carl Chaffers. Here's what I got for for Scrooge, Chris. Bill Belichick cuz he's haunted by the ghost of Christmas past. Mm. What is the ghost of Christmas past for him? It's, it's the, you know, the the dominant years. Yeah, that's you know? true. Yeah, that's They are uh Patriots are kind of coming off of a tough loss against the Raiders, and whew, he's probably sitting in it there this week. He's haunted by all those good years and trying to figure out how the fuck to get back there. All right, okay. How about Rudolph the Red-Nosed Reindeer? So I got Gardner Minshew because hmm. nobody thought he was going to matter, right? And uh, although he has a really good uh, touchdown-to-interception ratio his entire career, he's just not thought of the same way as the other quarterbacks. But Christmas Eve, uh, it's all down to him to 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 lead the way, to light the sleigh. Love that. Yeah, I got uh, kind of a similar vein here, but I got Josh Allen because uh, he's uh, he's lighting the way for the Bills in the snow. Yeah, that's good. Yeah. Was 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 did 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 Rudolph happen to be the biggest baddest reindeer? Yeah, I didn't really look at it from that perspective, Chris. Okay. I kind of get the underdog, uh, you know, perspective. But I was just, you know, topical. The snow, they, Bills just yeah. came off a big snow the snow game. They, they're dealing with the snow all the time. If they're Rudolph Buffalo, was so. their entire run game, their entire pass <laughs> game. Yeah. I never oh. thought about how weird a genetic deformity that is. What? The red, red nose? nose? Yeah, I know. Lights up. It's really fun. It's kind of cool, though. It's kind of cool. All right. How about uh, John McClain from Die Hard? Oh, John McClain. So he's an agent of chaos. Uh, Matt reminded me of a line, come to California, we'll have a few laughs. I'm going George Kittle. Nice. Uh, George Kittle just seems like a total, uh, you know, uh, yeah, agent of chaos. Reminds me of Bruce Willis in those movies. 
gonna go to that 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 Japanese plaza and just Nakatomi Nakatomi Plaza. And, so uh, so Greenlight Pod is officially like Die Hard is a Christmas movie. Like we're we're you know we're taking that stance. Yeah, happened uh, on Christmas. I get. I mean, I get it. I think we're better than that kind Are of we? opinion, but really? I get it. I really? like to think so. That's the that's the multicolored lights of of Christmas <laughs> movie takes. You know. A little tired. I think we can do better. All right, you got anybody for John McClane, Bo? No, I like no. George Kittle. I didn't have a go. I like right, George Kittle. That's a hit, great fucking call, you can, Chris. You can hit this one first. Kevin McAllister from Home Alone. All right, this might be a little bit of a stretch, but I got, uh, I got you know, the GOAT, Tom Brady for Kel- Kevin McAllister just because, you know, he's grinding. He's trying to make it happen. happen. He's trying to defend the, the NFC South, but he's got an empty house, mm. you know? Mm-hmm. He's trying to just make it happen. There's not a lot of weapons, you know. He's making, he's making the fucking, he's just making it happen with whatever's available. Mm-hmm. That's kind of what I was thinking. He's all alone. <laughs> he's I home alone, I, man. I, I mean, we're a year late with this, but last year I would have said Trevor Lawrence. Mm-hmm. You know, the poor guy. The only people in the house with him are are, are Harry and Marv, and I cast Urban Meyer as both of them. <laughs> Oh, the wet bandits. They're yeah. sticky bandits. They're I the wet that. bandits. Yeah. 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 The the yeah, the stinky finger bandits. <laughs> yeah. Who's the pigeon lady then? <laughs> he's the pigeon lady too. <laughs> I don't know. He's just yeah, he's, he's all played, the villains he, he's from like, all the home alone franchises. He, he, yeah, he's like uh he, he's like um Eddie Murphy and Nutty Professor. He's just playing different <laughs> characters. Urban Meyer's just playing all the bad characters. Yeah. Yeah. All right, how about Santa Claus? Oh, Santa Claus. He's got a lot of gifts. He's obviously the king. I'll, I'll let you go go first, Bo. Yeah, I, I like Andy Reid for this one. I mean, you think Santa Claus, uh, for whatever reason, Andy Reid just comes to mind, you know. I made a joke about being a future mall Santa, but I could see Andy Reid doing that. He's got all the gifts. He's got all the gadgets, all the little toys and all the trinkets, and he's passing out touchdowns to everybody. You know, he's got a smooth operation. His little elves are running it for him up there in Kansas City. I like Andy Reid for the big man. Okay. He's got red, too, you know? I feel like that just works. I don't have anybody for Santa. Okay, hold on a second. Uh, Santa. Santa. Not real. No, I don't have anything. Not having something is fine. How about Clark Griswold? Okay, I got something for Clark Griswold here. I don't know why. It just kind of reminds me of Tom Brady right now. (laughs) You know, like he's trying to fucking, he's trying to raise a family. You know, it's chaos. <laughs> There's stuff going on. Nothing's he, going right for he him. He really is. He really is more normal than people realize. Um, it's just shit's going wrong, right? And cousin Eddie is Antonio Brown. <laughs> oh, I love that. Yeah. That's nice. He's yeah, ca- that's good fuck, this guy's here again. And the kids yeah, are like, he- Antonio. And it's just like get rid of him. No, yeah. dude. He, I think he has like a fucking ankle monitor on. He was supposed to they had the fucking house surrounded. Remember two weeks ago when A B they were like, yo, they're the DEA and the fucking federales and the Tampa police, they're all camped outside his house. And then the next day he's like posting courtside from a basketball game. <laughs> And in between, there was a leak of a picture that looked like Giselle in his bed, I which I didn't that. like. I, yeah, I'm not going there. And 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 that was that was treachery, you know. He found some young lady that looked like Giselle. Uh, yeah, cousin Eddie is Antonio Brown. I like That's that great. for Clark Clark Griswold. I had uh, Aaron Rodgers, you know, because Clark. There's always something going wrong, and it never really feels like it's Clark's fault, especially from his point of view. You mm. know, it's always somebody else. You know, the program that you know shit's happening taking wrong turns left and right stuff's popping up but it's not him he's just you know he's doing everything right oh another thing about brady is the girl by the pool and the girl in the car she symbolizes like a whole host of new hot blondes that are at his beck and call now you see the new instagram Mm -hmm. i'm not saying she's hot i mean not my type but um you know she's she's pretty hot i saw that i've been been seeing a lot of types for sure i got a type (laughs) Uh, but yeah, no, I think it really checks out no matter who we cast as uh, Clark. Yep. All right. Uh, Ralphie? Ralphie. Okay. He's the guy. And this kind of had to be explained to me because uh, I didn't really, I wasn't as into that movie. 
What's yeah. the movie? I hadn't seen it either. It didn't stop me from wearing the bunny outfit for right, Halloween. That was pretty but funny. I think Bo knows about it. Yeah, but Ralphie, evidently, he wants weapons, right? That's his thing. He's like obsessed with weapons. He doesn't have any. He wants them. And then at the end, he, he beats up a bully or something like that. Uh, give me Lamar Jackson. Hmm. Get this guy some weapons. Maybe there's a happy ending for him. I think um, I think Lamar's going to be back very soon. Yeah, I like that. I didn't have a great one for Ralphie, so I like that one, Chris. Okay. All right. How that's... about George Bailey, Chris? Oh, George Bailey. The guy that's like, fuck this shit, man. This... And then he's like, ah, I want back in. Uh, Sean Payton. Nice. George Bailey. You know? Um, that's not a great one, but it'll play. <laughs> I got a good one that I feel really, really good about. Uh, Yukon Cornelius. Jason Kelsey. Exactly. You got yes. it. Yeah, same exactly. thing. Exactly. Same thing. Yeah. Yep. I just read a, I just read a little, just did a little background research on Yukon Cornelius. You know, he's greedy, he's reactionary, and a hipster. A hipster. He's got a heart of, heart he's got of a gold. Heart of gold. Yep. And that's our boy. Jason we read Kelsey. the same bio on this and, Yukon Cornelius. Yeah, and Kelsey just, you know, dressed up as the guy from 51st States. And, you know, I think. Kels can pull off Yukon Cornelius pretty well. He's got that big bushy beard and those ice picks. You know, I, I like looks to see like Kels him. rolling in for a game. <laughs> yeah, dressed up as Yukon Cornelius. I think that'd be a good move. Okay. Right, on you, the same page on that one. Chris. You guys got any more like Frosty the Snowman or the Grinch? Yeah, sure. Frosty the Snowman comes to life for a brief amount of time. Uh, fears that he'll melt. So he goes to the North Pole. Um, Cole Beasley, you know? Uh, yeah. <laughs> oh, that's fucking right? gold, dude. Yeah. That's not bad. Guy was yeah, like, I yeah, I'm that. melting down here in Tampa. There's not much good going on down here. Yeah. Uh, I, was thinking, I was thinking our boy Ryan Fitzpatrick comes to life, you know, short mm-hmm. amount of time. He's got that magic. Yep. And then he'll just <laughs> melt away for a little bit, you know. Uh, we, we forgot about the Grinch, the guy who doesn't want anybody else to have a good time. He's got a small heart. Um, is there anybody that you cast as the Grinch, Bo? I don't know, Chris. Sometimes I log in on these Tuesday morning podcasts and it's with me. you and I'm, and it's you. You got yeah. some Grinch green in you. But you also, you know, I'm hoping your heart grows three times in size today, Chris. Thanks, man. Uh, didn't little, you, didn't you AFib? <laughs> Get the fuck out of here. You're talking about I actually my heart. A... <laughs> <laughs> my heart's strong. Uh, I had a good one. Uh, Tiny Tim. Oh, know? yeah. So Tiny Tim, he's, you know, God bless us, everyone. He's on crutches. He's, you know, a little banged up, but he's just appreciating what he has. He just wants to be out there. I have Mike White. Yep. For Tiny Tim. You know, he's getting his ribs reviewed by 10 doctors. He's just trying to get out there. You know, he wants to be part of the Christmas miracle with the Jets. And, you know, it's just not it's not happening for, for Tiny Tim or Mike White right now. <laughs> That's interesting. <laughs> That's really interesting. So Tiny Tim, they wouldn't let him play? They wouldn't let him play. <laughs> he had Maybe the... he's Odell Beckham Jr. <laughs> oh, okay. Not like passing that. any physicals. See you next Christmas. <laughs> yeah, exactly. but in the end, Tiny Tim actually plays on Christmas. I'm sure. Okay, so maybe, Redemption. maybe, maybe Odell will sign with the team. Is it too late for Odell to sign with the team? No. Oh, he could sign in Buffalo. He could. Yeah. Um, that's the last of our casting. Though <laughs> we were talking about the ideal stocking earlier. What what goes in your ideal stocking? Well, well, I think you know your ideal stocking when you're a you know. 30s plus D Gen like us is a little bit different than you know what we'd want when we were kids, mm-hmm. young scrappy youths running around. So we were riffing off the idea of you know what we'd put in a green light stocking. And the first thing that comes to mind for me, I like to you know we we talked about you know nicotine and tobacco on this pod, and we're a bit big Zin boys. So I got my little tin of peppermint Zin yeah. right here. It's a very Christmassy flavor. I'm throwing in some. I'm throwing a little tin of peppermint zin in that stocking, you know, catch a little Christmas buzz. Peppermint zin. You got to go right peppermint. from the, the, the peppermint uh, candies and all that stuff yeah. to, to the peppermint nicotine. You know how a, a sommelier will uh, pair different wine and food combos? I like to do that with zin. So I'm going to pair a little peppermint zin with some eggnog this Christmas season. You know, really, really feel good about that one. I want some good weed, high in terps. Um... <laughs> Like none of this dog shit I've been smoking lately. Uh, yeah, you've been just, smoking. You've been smoking Doctor Fax's weed, huh? No, that's not it. Doctor <laughs> Fax. I have. I haven't had any Doctor Fax weed in a little bit. It's just I've been. Uh, let's. I don't want to. I don't want to go down this road. But I haven't. 
it's it's been a bad couple weeks. Okay, so I I would like some I would like some um I want to see the trichomes, you know? Ooh. Yeah. yeah, where you do you zoom in on it with your mm-hmm. with your camera lens and you yeah. can see the little I mean, I I'm not much of a weed guy like you, Chris, but that's you know. I, I like it in the put fam- a little nug in your stocking. A nug in the stocking sounds good. You need more than I, a nug, yeah. though. I like Christmas. It's Christmas. I stay high on Christmas. I like getting the uh, like really fancy liquor, like little airport style bottles, Ooh. like little selection. Yeah. What are you gonna go with, like on Christmas? What's your Christmas little airport shooter? Little Bailey's yeah, or something. Like that kind of sounds good. Like Jameson. Ooh. You hear him? So, some Rumplemans. <laughs> I don't know Rumplemans. No, don't don't do Rumplemans. Check out some Rumplemans next time you're posted up at the bar. Get a little, get a little Rumplemans, nope. kinks, and that'll get you, that'll get you going. That'll, have that'll me, warm you up. That'll go right back to 2003 for me. Yeah, uh, that's a college thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. But just remember, the best gift that everybody wants is cash. That's true. Absolutely. Or that's true. no, some, or a transaction from Cash App. <laughs> cash App, yeah. No, yeah, some right. scratchers in your stocking. That's kind of fun because it's like you know potentially a huge gift but even just the thrill of scratching those things off of the coin if you throw a like, scratcher in somebody's stocking and they want a million dollars do you feel like you're partially entitled for for yeah, it yeah give me give me just throw me something yeah you know yeah. take me out to eat yeah no you know? question bring me give me a drink I want, but i also like give me like a vanilla coke put a vanilla coke in my stocking <laughs> that's yeah. terrible that's an awful no? opinion a no. terrible, Bad take. Take. terrible vanilla take. coke is gross man all right what? merry christmas guys don't freeze bo We'll be back tomorrow with Kyle Long. Listen to the full podcast on Spotify, Apple Podcasts, and other podcast streaming platforms. Uh, wherever you want to get the podcast, you can get the podcast. Pretty simple. New episodes every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Don't forget to like and subscribe for more content. Podcasts get pretty wild. This is real tame.